Okay, so what happens if we do something like this? So let's say we say v1, 4, and we'll say that that's equal to 5. So I'll print out So then we'll print out the size and capacity of the vector. And then let's also print the contents. I don't know why I put void there. That's weird. So we'll print the contents first using a for each loop. So we'll do the same thing we did before. And then we'll do the same thing, or not the same thing, but a similar thing where we print the contents using a for loop. like this, except we need to do vi or v1 of ii. So we've modified one using array indexing, and then we've printed the variable out in both different ways. So let's compile this and run it. So you'll notice that value is there. But when we go through the size, the size hasn't been updated. So now let's do the same thing using the pushback method, which is how we add something to a vector. So now we're going to push back six. I'm going to copy this code above. And just dump it here. So now we've done push back six. And then we're going to print all the same things that we did before. The rest of this code is the same. So now. Notice when we did the pushback six, the vector size increased. Now we have six at the end, but notice we overwrote the five. So again, using array indexing for vectors, you want to be careful that you know what you're doing and that you're careful with it because they're just as unsafe as C arrays. The C++ vector gives you some additional safety mechanisms to fall back on. So it's best to utilize those. Now I'm kind of tired of printing the vector each time. So I'm going to write a function that I can call to say, hey, here's a vector, print it. So I'm going to print some vector. I can give the vector a name. That way I can tell in the output what I'm printing. And I'll also print its size. I'll also do its capacity. And I'll put an end of line character there. I think this is a little ridiculous how that's formatted. Let me fix that. I think, I think that makes a little more sense.
Okay, so now here's an example of where auto is really nice because I don't know what the type is stored in vector, but that's okay. Let me put some braces around that. I'm not going to put a comma. And I think that's good. Actually, let me... Just to shorten this up, let me not do the end of line here. So I may come back to this in a moment. Now, if I compile this, first off, I'm going to need a forward declaration. And we'll come back to that in a moment. So let's find where we want to actually add some more code. Okay, here we go. So let's add some values to V2, which if you'll recall, was initialized with an array. So I'll push back 40, 50, and 60. And then I'm going to print the vector, v2. And then I'll give it the name, v2. So let's see how the print vector works. And we're going to get some errors. So let's take a look at these. And you'll notice. Here, the T was not declared in this scope. So what I have to do is I need to, in this declaration, say that template type name T, so that it knows that T is the name of the template there. And I'm going to need to do the same thing here. And I'll format that a little bit differently so that the method signature itself is still pretty clear. So this should let me have that generic method once I get some other stuff cleared up. I misspelled this. And I'm missing my closing brace. Okay, so everything looks clear. And notice now I've done the pushback and there's the contents of my array. So let's think about, let's clean this up just a little bit. Let's add a space here just so that we get some symmetry. And then let's add an inline there. Oh, one other thing to notice is notice that the capacity and the size has both increased. So you may wonder, well, what happens if we define that capacity? So, or if we've already defined the capacity. So we'll do we'll add ten things to V1, which, if you recall had a capacity of 10, and then we added additional things to it. So we'll do v1, push back, and we'll say ii plus 10. And then let's print that vector. So let's see what this does. And you'll notice the size has been increased to 15 and the capacity is now 15. So now, so now in vector one, they're equal. And let's fix this space issue there. Okay, so now let's remove elements from our vector. So we're going to remove elements, but before we do that, we'll print the initial, hey, this is what this was. Then we'll print the vector. Now let's erase 
the first thing. So we will say that we've removed the first element. So let's compile. And if we run this, we're missing an inline somewhere. And we also copied the wrong code there. So let's see if that let's see if that clears things up. So we're going to need to expand our screen. So notice, here's our vector. We re we've removed the first element. Now, let's remove the fourth element. So we're going to say begin, which is the first element. So let's move three past that. Make sure everything's lined up. We're printing it. Okay, so now we're going to remove the fourth element. So the fourth element was one, two, three, four, six. So now notice six is gone. What about the last element? So instead of begin, we'll remove end. However, remember the end is the end of the array. So we need to go back one. So we'll say minus one. So we'll say remove the last element. So we should see the 19 gone, and we do. OK, so how about the third to last element? Well, then we save minus 3. So let's see what that looks like now. So we removed 16, which was third to last. All right, so suppose I want to remove not just a single element. Suppose I want to remove first half of the first half of the element of the of the vector. So the way I'm going to do that is I'm going to erase From beginning to beginning plus the size divided by 2. So this says erase a range. So notice there's two entries. There's this entry, and then there's this entry, which is the start plus whatever the size is. So if the size is 10, this would be begin and then begin plus 5. So if we compile, now you can see that we didn't print this out, so we don't get to see the results. So let's print this out and see if we get something more interesting. And now notice the first half of my array is gone. So it was, odd, it was an odd-numbered array, so we did get truncation there. So it, instead of 6, it did 5. So it removed five and left six. So there's another method we can use called pop back. And so now I'm just going to print the vector again. So now when I did pop back, notice it deleted the last element. OK, so there are some examples of deleting single elements and ranges. So now we're going to go back to V3. And to remind us what that is, we'll print it out first.
and then we'll print the result of calling v3 front and we'll also do the back and we get a core dump for some reason I thought we did a pushback on v3 at some point Ah, oh, you know what? I meant to do it right here, but I didn't. So here we're going to do a calling pushback on an uninitialized array, or vector, I should say. So let's do 44, 55, and 66. Okay, so yeah, we didn't initialize it, so of course it's not going to work. Okay, so now let's compile again. Or I should say we didn't add anything. So when we said give me the front and back, it wasn't happy. So it's still not happy. Ah, because we called it on V2, not V3. So remember, it doesn't matter what your output is. if you're not telling it to give you the right output. Yeah, so now look, there's our contents. Very good. Now, where's the 55? That's really odd. And notice we didn't do V3 there. Okay, so now let's double check this. Okay, I think we got that fixed and yeah, there's our 55. Okay, so one last thing we want to talk about is suppose we want to sort a vector. And let's see if we have a nice unordered vector. I think V4, yeah, we didn't we didn't initialize V4 or we didn't it's not sorted. Okay, so let's see how we want to sort a vector. So first, let's print the vector. And then we're going to do an after as well. Now we haven't sorted it yet, but I want to be sh sh double check that I'm sure what that V4 isn't already sorted. Yeah, and you'll notice that those are in random location. So now to sort this, I'm going to call the sort function from begin to v4 end. And this comes in the algorithm include file. I don't think we use string, so I'm going to delete that. So we've sorted from begin to end. I'm going to save this. And it wants me to spell algorithm right. Let's see if that's better. And it is. So now if I run this, notice now I get a nice sorted vector. So there's some examples of working with vectors, some of the functions there. So vectors are really nice. They let you do some additional things that you can do with, that you can't do with an array. They also let you do things more safely than you can do with an array, but you have to make sure you're only using the safe techniques. It does let you access those unsafely like you could with a, an array. So be careful with, with, with how you use your vectors, but if you are careful, then they can be very useful.